Good morning. It's Thursday morning. We read from Acts 15, 22 through 35. Then it seemed good to the apostles and the elders with the whole church to choose men from among them and send them to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. They sent Judas, called Barsabbas, and Silas, leading men among the brothers, with the following letter. The brothers, both the apostles and elders, to the brothers who are of the Gentiles in Antioch and Syria and Cilicia, greetings. Since we have heard that some persons have gone out from us and troubled you with words, unsettling your minds, although we gave them no instructions, it has seemed good to us, having come to one accord, to choose men and send them to you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men who have risked their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have therefore sent Judas and Silas, who themselves will tell you the same things by word of mouth. For it has seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay on you no greater requirements than these, to that you abstain from what has been sacrificed to idols, and from blood, and from what has been strangled, and from sexual immorality. If you keep yourselves from these, you will do well. So when they were sent off, they went down to Antioch, and having gathered the congregation together, they delivered their letter. When they had read it, they rejoiced because of its encouragement. And Judas and Silas, who were themselves prophets, encouraged and strengthened the brothers with many words. And after they had spent some time, they were sent off in peace by the brothers to those who had sent them. But Paul and Barnabas remained in Antioch, teaching and preaching the word of the Lord with many others also. So <coughs> the, um, the folks in Jerusalem simply send the letter that recounts what we talked about yesterday, the, the compromise that they came to, the sort of four, um, four requirements that they lay on these Gentiles to refrain from immorality, refrain from eating meat that's been sacrificed to idols, that's been strangled, and, and it's bloody. Um, which, I, again, I think is a, is a fairly good compromise. They, um, they send this, and everybody rejoices when they get it. Uh, Judas and um, Silas stay there in Antioch for a while and then are sent back. Um, Paul and Barnabas remain in Antioch, which has become kind of like their headquarters. Um, they've been there for a year or so already. And they remain there um, uh, leading the church and teaching and preaching and that, that sort of thing. This is the first council that the church has, and it's, it's really sort of precipitated by this emergency in Antioch. They don't ask for <coughs> leaders from everywhere to come. They just get some people from Antioch and Jerusalem, and they have this council. Later on, the church will begin to hold periodic ecumenical councils when there's a need, and they will invite bishops and leaders from all around the known world, the Roman Empire, to come to some place like Constantinople or, or uh, Nicaea or somewhere, and they'll have a conference and they'll debate and they'll, they'll fuss about things and then they'll um, come to conclusions which they will write down. And so this letter stands as sort of the record of the Jerusalem Council. Uh, the later councils, are, the records are much more extensive. They take, you know, uh, many pages of a book or, or in some cases whole volumes um, where they write down what they decided and, and, and how they got there and why they decided it. <coughs> and they tell their advice to the church. And this is the way that um, decisions are recorded. In the ancient world, of course, there was no such thing as a videotape or anything like that. They, the only thing they could do was to write down 
what everybody agreed to, um, and that and and keep copies of that, and that that's how the church uh, progressed through the ages. Um, someone asked me once after a worship service where this Apostles' Creed was in the Bible. And I was a little taken aback and I said, well, it's all over the Bible. No, but where in the Bible is it? Because I'm a Baptist and we only believe in the Bible. And before I could respond to that, the guy's brother-in-law, who was a Presbyterian, came up and said, pay no attention to him. He's an ignorant Baptist. But it struck me that this guy couldn't see that the creed is a summation of, of the Gospels. And the creed was developed so far back in the life of the church that we don't even know where it started. Um, it was taken as the outline for the church's uh, work on some, some issues in Christology that became the Nicene Creed. We know where that was written and when. We know where it was updated and when uh, because of these written records. And so um, the ecumenical creed of the church is really what we in the Presbyterian tradition call the Nicene Creed. Um, that creed um, was written by a council in some year and, um, and has been the official sort of doctrinal position of Christians ever since. And so you see how these conferences, these, these councils, um, you see how they work. You know, they, they gather all the bishops together and they make a decision and they write it down and then they stick with it. There's some great stories from one of those uh, early councils and I'll just tell you one briefly, but um, apparently St. Nicholas, and we remember him as a jolly old guy who you know, gives gifts to children, but St. Nicholas was a kind of a tough guy and um, was at the council where they were debating whether Athanasius or Arius' position on who Jesus, um, who Jesus was would be accepted as, as uh, Orthodox and Athanasius is the winner. But at one point, uh, Nicholas just punches Arius in the nose and um, is immediately arrested and put in prison for attacking his fellow bishop. And then, of course, the um, an angel appears to the emperor in a dream and says, you got to let Nicholas go. He's on the right side of history here, and, or something like that, and they do. Um, so you never know what's going to happen in a council. You might even have a fist fight. But um, anyway... That's what happened in Acts uh, 15. Tomorrow we'll read about um, one of the first disagreements, fights in the church. So hang on for that and have a great day.